thank you dr bedi good evening everyone uh, this is uh, more or less the final you know talks that we have planned uh, I, we were just discussing uh, five minutes ago whether we should have one more a session on blueprinting so if it is that you would like to have one small session on blueprinting i think we can fit it in sometime uh, in the middle so do let us know uh, your opinion on cdme uh, biochemistry and uh, now i would like to introduce uh, dr rohini bhadre who is going to take this session on reflective writing dr bhadre is professor uh, department of biochemistry at the kj uh, somaiya medical college at mumbai and she is also meu coordinator and more than that she's been uh, in a way my student so um, you know as they say it's such a pleasure to have uh, someone whom you have seen come in and out uh, of the department as a student uh, move on and uh, become a professor and uh, you know look uh, sort of look after a whole unit as far as the uh, medical college is concerned it's a moment of pride for me so it's as if you know my bachcha has uh, grown wings and has flown and has is doing such a wonderful job uh, medical education is so dear to her heart and she takes everything that she does very seriously and uh, completes it to the core so with that um, small introduction which really doesn't do justice to rohini over to you rohini thank you madam for Uh, your kind words but it is because of you i am here today so at the outset uh, good evening to all of you and first and foremost i would like to thank dr sanjay bedi and of course dandekar madam who's been my mentor guide for give, allowing me or giving me an opportunity to be a faculty member for this cbme program now reflective writing is something uh, which we have been uh, just uh, i mean our students have been introduced to it and they have to uh, do it for ece for hdl and therefore it is uh, it is slightly difficult for them and uh, uh, how we can go about with it i'll explain uh, i hope you will uh, be able to understand through this session of mine so okay uh, so the objectives is at the end of the lecture you will be able to understand the concepts of reflection the common terms used for reflection the different models which we are going to see of reflections and uh, and what is the problems when we have a reflective writing and uh, what is the importance of reflection for medical students or even for practicing doctors or even for us also like we know whenever we attend like uh, the first time that i had to do a reflective writing was when i did my fema fellowship and i was told that uh, now you have to reflect so we were just had a small session so i really remember how difficult it was for me to reflect that time and therefore i realized how difficult it would be for our students also where they have to reflect and luckily for this new cbme where we have introduced this reflective writing we have in the foundation course something called as english english language which they have to teach and with uh, and coming from different backgrounds and with different uh, languages that spoken but our medium of instruction being english they have to write their reflections also in english so probably this english language has been uh, very useful to them uh, especially for the ones who come from uh, non english medium schools uh, for them to write this reflection because reflection is something which is thought which is your thought process and which you are going to actually write down so for that uh, this language is going to be really useful uh this is a small poem by rudyard kipling and it is a big poem and if you look at that poem the whole gist of reflection is in this poem like i keep six honest serving men and they taught me all i knew and their names are what and why and when and how and where and who so the whole of reflection when i am going to talk further is the whole gist that is put in this rudyard kipling's poem 
so if you look at what is reflection the word reflection it comes from the latin origin which is to bend or to turn back and it can be reflection right from physics to education anything you can have reflection on and therefore if i have to uh, define reflection or the def definition of reflection is basically a meta cognitive process that occurs before during and after situation that is before any workshop or before any lecture or before any session during the session and after the uh, action has taken place and what is it it's the purpose of developing greater understanding of both the self of yourself and the situation so that is the action that has taken place so that future actions that whatever you want to do can be informed by this understanding so whenever next action that you want to take with whatever reflections that you have done you can always vector that action next time that you do okay so this is basically the definition of reflection now when you come across these reflection you will hear a lot of words which are very having uh, terminologies like reflective capacity reflective practice uh, with a slightly different mean uh, you know a little bit more difference in that that is added but ultimately they are all the same so there is something like you will come across what is reflective capacity and this was uh, given in 2000 by donegy and mors very defined it as the higher order intellectual and affective activity so it's a complete activities in which the practitioner or means the person engages to critically analyze and evaluate their experiences so it's the same thing you are going to analyze whatever experience or whatever action that you have taken you are going to critically means you are going to interpret your action and evaluate your experience whether it is good bad why it was good why it was bad so in order to lead to a new understanding and appreciation of the way they think and operate in a clinical setting so how would you do it better next time so so this is another terminology that you have come across reflective capacity then there's something called as reflective practice when we we normally talk in terms of you should have a reflective practice so this is a third terminology so reflective practice ultimately it's all the same with a little slight difference here and there so what is reflective practice it is a practice that can be the way of developing an autonomous and self directed learning so it uh, so when you uh, analyze or when you interpret an action you reflect on an action you can definitely do better you can definitely have a self directed learning last time pragna madam had already told us about had a nice very nice session on what self directed learning is and with this reflective practice also you can have a good self directed learning for yourself and it's very important for medical students and medical professionals they can combine reflective practice so whatever of practice that you have done or whatever procedure that you have done and you have a checklist for that particular procedure so you have a checklist and whatever your procedure that you have done you reflect on your procedure and you counter check with the checklist so if that checklist whatever you have done matches with the checklist means you have done well but if it does not uh, match with that checklist and something is missing you know next time that oh i have missed this step and i can improvise on that step again so it will help to reduce diagnostic errors in patient care so the next important is what is reflective writing and very well john dewey has said we do not learn so much from experience as we do from reflecting on our experience and it's very very true if you do not reflect on your experience you will never know where you have gone wrong or why i did it and what i have to improve next time so that is how you can improve if you reflect 
on whatever action that you take. So if I have to uh, define it or something, it is like reflective writing involves consideration of the larger context, the meaning and the implications of an experience or action. And this was uh, given by Branch and Paranspe in 2002, which is cited in Monash University, 2013. And therefore, I'll just give you a difference between what is reflective writing and what is not reflective writing. So when we talk about reflective writing, what it should be basically, your response to experience. So what are your responses? What is your interpretation to any experience, to opinions, events, or new information? So what is your response to them? How are you interpreting it? What is the outcome of it? Your response to the thoughts and feelings, the way of exploring your learning. So you're going to describe, you're going to think over it, and then you're going to analyze it. So any kind of learning experience, if you're going to follow these steps, that is called as reflective. An opportunity to gain self-awareness, a way to achieve clarity and better understanding of what you are learning a chance to develop writing skills and a way of making meaning out of what you study. So everything that is, you are going to think over it, you are going to analyze it and whatever outcomes that you're going to get and you're going to use those outcomes, that is reflective writing. And what is wrought reflective writing is if you, uh, experience and you have to write reflection. You just describe it. What happened is not a reflective writing process. It is not like writing an essay wherein we as students, we had this hundred marks of essay of writing something. It's not that kind of essay writing questions. They are not essay, not describe the process. It is your thought process ki why this has happened, why it has not happened. Why should it have happened? You know, that is basically reflective writing. It is no decisions or judgment. If something is right or wrong, why it was right, why it was wrong, why it is good, why it is bad. And why, if it was bad, what could have been better? So that is basically reflective writing. What is, uh, why was it good? And how you can still make it better? That is reflective writing. Okay, so this is not reflective writing. Uh, now, when we talk about reflective writing, basically there are some models of reflection writing, reflections. And based on those models, we can write our reflection. And you can base, uh, see what I did was I have uh, with students, when uh, we first asked them at the foundation course, we asked them to reflect on the week that had happened in the foundation course. And they gave me some reflections, uh, which may I just couldn't believe that, you know, they really were not exposed. I had just given them a brief of what a reflection is. And then I um, asked them to write the reflections, but they really couldn't write the reflections. And then I really took a session of it. And uh, I have put at the end uh, the reflections that my students have written. And they are so fine tuned to now writing those reflections that it is it's a really very easy process for them. And I think you can use some of this. Uh, I mean, most of you must have also taken certain sessions for your students also for writing reflections. But uh, I have at the end put up some vocabularies which you can also use uh, to give it to them and it will really help them to write the reflection part of it. And using these models of reflection, many of you must be knowing also them. Uh, this is the Squans model, where what he actually says is that practice, that is when you are in an uh, doing a session. Now, what happened was when this pandemic struck, I think all of us as teachers, we said, oh, we have our students stopped coming. And then uh, we realized that uh, uh, we have so much portion left and how do we go about of it? And I think all of us started this uh, online teaching. 
and uh, since i was the meu coordinator at my college uh, i was to initiate these online uh, classes and i think was the first person uh, to start off in these online classes and i still remember that these online classes that we have taken uh, for me also it was the first time that i took the class and therefore when i took my class uh uh i reflected that was during my class my reflection in action was going on whether um, my students were able to see my slides whether i am audible to my students because there was no uh, this from the other side like when we have these conventional classes when we are doing one to one we know whether the students can understand whether the i mean we can see them and we didn't know uh, how whether they are understanding what they are doing but here there was absolutely no feedback from the student in between so so that was my reflection action whether they can hear whether it was i'm audible whether my slides are visible to them whether the net connection will be proper all these things so that was my reflection in action so when i was doing the process after i finished my lecture i reflected on the action of my process that happened whether i used the right platform the webinar platform was right uh, so whether uh, they have understood how will i improvise on it all these things what was good about it and then looking at the others uh, who were taking their sessions i reflected on that that action of mine and using the other input from the other people so that was how i reflected on my action and there is reflection for action so now next time whatever action that i want to take how better i can do it so i can practice it so how good i will be at it so i'm going to use uh, i mean i had attended and thanks to dr vedi uh, sir very really arranged so many webinars for us you know where through the hp of ours and uh, uh, where we were imbibed with a lot of knowledge of how to go on with these online classes and that was so that was for the action which i wanted to take so next time when i took my online classes i did improvise on many of these things and i could really take my class better uh, and of course dr chinmay because he was the he was very instrumental in my first class also Chinmay, are you there? So really, thanks to you also. So, what is reflection and action consist of? Thinking ahead, analyzing, experiencing, and critically responding. So that is in action. So when you are doing your action, so this is my action today, my session. Even I am thinking whether you can hear, whether you can understand, whether my slides are. So that is my in action. On action is thinking. to subsequent to the situation so after my session is over i'm going to think of the action whether how this act, uh, session was discussing i'll be discussing with uh, dandekar madam how it will went with uh, pragnya madam and uh, all of it so that is going to be my own action this is a very common model which is called as gibbs model of reflection which is the commonly used model and the other models are basically uh the all a combination of these models this model where they've taken steps and they have made it a shorter model so gibbs model very says description what happened feelings what were you thinking and feeling evaluation what was good and bad about the experience analysis what sense can you make of the situation conclusion what else could you have done an action plan if it arose again what would you do so that is it so if we have to see description where was i who else was there you can ask yourself these questions when you start reflective writing so based on this questions you can actually write your reflection where was i who else was there why was i there what was i doing what happened then the next step feeling so when this action was going on what was i how was i feeling at the beginning so when i started my session i was a little apprehensive so i was apprehensive so how was i feeling at the beginning what was i thinking about 
what did other people's action make me think feel how did i feel about the outcome and what do i think about it now so this is my feelings when even now when i'm taking your uh, session i have these feelings so these feelings i'm going to write down evaluation what was good about the experience for me the patient now patient here that that time is the students and others what was bad about the experience for me the patient or the students and for the others so that is my uh, thought process and then i'm going to analyze my whole uh, reflection that is i would break it down what did i do well in this whole session now i go to think about me what did i do well what was not so well what did others do well okay when others have taken these sessions i am going to think about what dr dandekar madam did what pragna madam how did they do better did it go as expected why why not what theory research helped me understand the experiences and then i'm going to conclude could i have done anything differently what are the key things i have learned from this incident about me my performance others and their performance can this be evidence of achievement of placement outcomes or competencies uh the last is action plan and then on these i'm going to take an action plan so again the whole process will again start from description so what could i what would i do in a similar situation in the future so next time if i have to take a what should i do what aspects of my knowledge skills could i develop how will i do this what goals can i set myself for the future what outcomes competencies do i need to focus on now so these i'm going to think about it so my next cyclic process the next session that i take i'm going to use them okay and then again i reflect it so it becomes a very cyclic process the next is something called as klolb's experimental learning cycle where we have something like an active experimentation again where i'm going to talk about the whole uh, session which i actually took so i jumped into it and i took a session then the concrete experiences like um, uh, the con experiences from others where others have given me experiences that i'm going to use it then reflect on my own uh, process and uh, abstract conceptualization is whatever i learned from the webinars or whatever i read about it on these ahp webinars of on online teachings or whatever i read about it i'm going to use all of it and again i'm going to jump into that process of taking a less session so this is called as the kolb's experiential learning cycle so as i said all those models are basically the same thing but with a different aspect to it but ultimately its the meaning is same so you have an active experimentation you try uh thinking about it uh then uh whatever other ideas you have after your observation use those observation and then the actual learning from different people like as i said the webinars and hp webinars or whatever reading material that you have got you can use it <coughs> this is the last model which is called as the bottens model which is normally this is the model that i have given my students to write on uh, when they write their reflective and uh, this model is a uh, is the same thing which is coming from gibbs cycle uh, which is uh, shortened up and it says what so what and what next so it has just three questions and using those three questions ki what happened what did others do what was my reaction uh, what is the purpose of returning to this situation so what did i feel at that time what are my so what are my feelings now so what positive aspects so what have i noticed about so what observations to any colleagues make of the way i acted very important so what is the purpose of returning to this lesson and now what next so what am i going to do so what are the implications for me others what difference does it make what is the uh, next uh, main learning that i have taken from this reflection what next will help me to do uh, uh, do i need to help me to take uh, perform this action again 
and what next aspect should be tackled first so if you the use these three major questions also it's going to be very easy for you to write your reflection and using these uh, questions which will help you to write so when we as i said when i did my fame of fellowship i had a real difficult task there was a real problems in reflecting so there were certain concerns like unsure of writing style uncertain about the requirements of the task concerned over use of the appropriate language feeling uncomfortable expressing thoughts not able to think of ideas events or issues not able to accept strengths or weaknesses not willing to discuss ideas with others these were all the concerns or these are all the problems normally while reflecting and we have to overcome these problems so that we can have a very good reflective practice and which will definitely help us <coughs> in our future endeavors so whenever we write these reflective writings there are two types we have something called as a structured and unstructured structured is something which is a non academic reflective writing uh which is like most of us do have a personal diary and what do we write in our personal diaries our reflection what has happened why did it happen but that is just like a story that we write learning in the, from a journal learning a journal or a narrative that we have normally these narratives are also reflective writings or nowadays even blog writing that we do that is also a reflective type but they are all unstructured reflective writing but when we expect our students to write or uh, uh, we it's better that we have a structured writing and there are a lot of ways to structure a reflective writing and uh, basically a uh, reflection uses the following major components like you have an introduction where the event the incident or topic whatever it is when did it happen that you can write it in that just a small introduction you may not even do that you can even do it in the description part of it so your description is basically the process what you have done and the problems of the events so it's description and problems of the events the third is cause and effect of the critical event so whatever the event or whatever the process that took so here you don't write the whole process in the description you can write the whole process in the event you are going to interpret your process it's just the interpretation part of your process that's what i said what so what what next so here description will be your what cause and effect will be your so what and explain and critic will be what next so what happened what are you trying to resolve here what you have learned and how you would move forward i just put this example of an unstructured like there was a task which was given to a group of people and uh, how they went about it and uh, this whole thing they have put it in one unstructured where they uh, found that a theory of cooperation actually works and initially they were quite uh, i mean they felt that uh, somebody was better or somebody had a better task somebody had a, a easier task somebody had a difficult task and they felt that cooperation if they would do uh, they would do it much better and that's what was the result and finally they felt that when you do a work as a combined team it is far effective so this same unstructured one you use the bottom model and you structure it and say what so what what next so this same thing i described it into description interpretation and outcome that is description was what happened so so what happened actually and whenever you write this description it has to be very very uh, it is has to be your experience and try to keep it short so uh what happened what is being examined so that whole task which i have written unstructured i have just put it over here that the task was shared amongst members of the team and initially the task was not seen as equally difficult by all team members now we come to interpretation so what so what are the applications of this learning what is the most important interesting useful relevant about the object event or idea 
how can it be explained example with theory how is it similar to and different from others so this is your interpretation so you put forth these questions and then start writing your reflections so this is that same part where i have written the interpretation part of it like there was cooperation there was this theory which uh, of cooperation that is what they have used so they have interpreted it and uh, because they felt that there was unfairness and to be fair they felt that they should cooperate and do it and then you come to the next that is what next or what are the outcomes of it and uh, what knowledge or skills you need to develop so that you can handle this type of situation so what have i learned from this what does this mean for my future so this is because of cooperation they felt that you can do better work and it is far uh, cooperatively you can be better at any task so this is what it is so some points to bear in mind while writing reflections as i said description keep it short be use the present tense and not past tense while you are writing description as i said reflection is an exploration and explanation of event not just a description genuinely reflecting write, reflective writing often involves revealing anxieties errors and weaknesses as well as strengths and successes so that you can improve on your experiences it is normally necessary to select just the most significant parts of the event or ideas on which you are reflecting it is often useful to reflect forward to the future as well as reflective back on the past now when you are writing interpretation it is the most important part of it or that was so what and when you can do that you can actually use these vocabulary as i have put here like if i say for me the most significant experience was or for me the most relevant learning happened when you can use these words and you can actually write your reflection or previously i felt or at first i noticed or this could be due to this is similar to because unlike this demonstrates or unlike this reveals so you can use these vocabularies while actually writing your this writing your uh, in re reflections coming to outcomes that is what next so having discussed i now wonder or having analyzed i now realize having additionally i have additionally i have learned that i have significantly developed skills in however i have not sufficiently developed my ability to so uh, uh, this knowledge is important to me as a learner this skill will be useful to me as a practitioner you can use all these vocabularies because i did not uh, uh because i did not i have not yet i will now need to so that is your next step so since, since if you do not have achieved certain skills so you need to achieve those skills next time to better your action and that is why i've just put two of two of my my students uh, reflections one on atcom where they have really improvised on their uh, reflection writing and one on early clinical exposure the reflection was the 1.4 model and uh, on early clinical exposure was workflow of a clinic, clinical biochemistry laboratory in a tertiary care hospital which they had gone and observed it and they really improvised on their reflective writing so the importance of reflective writing is to develop skills that will be needed in the future professional life dealing with multifaceted problems for which there is no ideal solution to recognize the importance of being able to frame a problem before trying to solve it or to be able to stand back from your self and question your behavior and attitudes to understand that problem situations can be viewed in many different ways depending on the perspective of the person involved 
And why is it very important for medicals? It integrates theoretical learning and clinical practice, as I just told you, how you can use your checklist and your reflective writing. It prepares medics for dealing with messy, ill-defined issues. It is a part of student-centered learning, action research, and experiential learning. It is an alternative to technical rationality, which forms the basis of traditional learning. So it really helps in the conventional learning. If you reflect, it will really help you to go far ahead. So your take home messages, reflective writing helps you learn from experience, helps you to build on your expertise. Developing your expertise is an important aspect of evidence based practice. Reflective writing can be used as evidence to include in your portfolio, which is very important. As I said, in your portfolios, any of your actions that you have done, any of your workshops you have to done, anything that you have attended, if you reflect and you keep it in your portfolio, it adds to your portfolio. So reflective writing should be a practice. And once you have this, you please put it in your portfolios and uh, it really adds to your portfolios. That's very important. So that's why I said it helps to achieve your placement outcomes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello. Anyone? I hope you have all understood what is reflective writing. And I'm open to any kind of discussions. Any questions? I think uh, we have understood everything. Hello? Mm, I think we have understood everything. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Yes, Dandekar. now Dr. Miller, Dr. Miller Dandekar. Dandekar, madam, any comments? Yes, no, this is this is a very important topic and uh, congratulations, uh, Rohini, you really touched on all the aspects. And uh, it is important for us to, uh, to, to tell the students how to reflect. And that is yeah. the reason why, uh, you know, some time has to be spent by us. I know we have time constraints and faculty uh, number constraints, but at least during the span of their uh, uh, span with us, we should try and at least read one reflection of each student, you know, so that we are able yeah. to uh, comment on it and tell them how to critique and how to go into in-depth thinking because it is internalization of what one has felt that has to be put into onto the paper. But one word of caution, as they grow, out, go, uh, grow up and go on into the wards, etc., we have to be careful to tell them that, you know, because of all the legalities and some other problems that people face nowadays, where, you know, this kind of a reflection could be used in the court uh, as, you know, I mean, I, I, there was a case in England very recently where this, um, where this uh, doctor was uh, penalized for having written something uh, that oh maybe i should have treated this patient with x and not with y she reflected and she wrote it and it was held against her so nowadays yeah. when we tell people to reflect we and we want them to mention names we tell them don't mention names just say x just say y that is a word of caution to be put to uh, put to the students of course that is later on uh, right now we don't we, they don't really deal with patients so it's not much a, a big deal I think uh, there was someone who wanted to make a comment. Yes, Dr. Miller Baskar, Bhav Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a very wonderful lecture. Uh, what a question I right now have is uh, regarding this reflecting writing. It should be put up in the logbook. Uh, if I am correct. Uh, so what I want to ask is, uh, is it necessary to give them a specific time during our nine to five or any particular schedule of uh, like uh, uh, teaching hours or they can write no, this no. 
Yeah. What we do is that time. we ask them to go back and reflect and write down. They don't need to reflect immediately. Or uh, okay. after the session, we give them a day or so and reflect and give it back to me, us. So that's what we do. Okay. During our EC, we have asked them to because there is three hours of EC. So during EC, hmm. I have asked them to uh, write their reflections there and then only. And I have given okay. them basically these three questions. If you have seen in my this, those three questions: what, so what, what next? And I've actually taken a session on them and I'd use given them these vocabularies because with the help of this vocabulary, they could really write down the reflection. And I've seen an improvement in them. And hmm. most of my colleagues and the other departments also felt that. Their departments also EC and SDS they had reflected quite well, so we have asked them to write. They are supposed to write in their uh, log books. Yeah, is it see this what and what now and what next and that part we actually have written by default in uh, our log book, so they know yes, where yes. to or what to write. And uh, yeah. actually there was a problem with I think misunderstanding. You can give them vocabularies, so, so that will help so. them. Because there was a misunderstanding, and uh, we asked them to write uh, within a hour. We gave them an hour, uh -huh. and it created a, so much chaos among them. So next time we will try to do this kind of thing that we will give my, maybe one or two days at, to submit this thing. Yeah, but EC, so, if there is enough time in the EC uh, module, EC time there is enough time in that EC, so they can reflect yeah. on it. Reflection is not some pages and pages; it's just a page maximum one page that they have to reflect so it's not many pages much. it's one page that they have thank you very much ma'am thank you okay. hello madam good evening thank you for the lecture it was nice yeah thank uh, you uh, madam regarding reflective writing we are uh, following according to mci booklet like as you yeah. told uh, in early clinic exposure in the case huh. uh, discussion and closure i mean in basic yeah. science correlation Yes. There is one session on uh, discussion and closure. In that yeah. component, we are making the students write the reflections of uh, the uh, six sessions held earlier, the six hours, what they learnt. Yeah. And I'm finding yeah. the students uh, do a beautiful job. With yeah, they, that, uh, they are re really right, uh, so good that uh, uh, like we are very happy with the way we teach also sometimes because there is yeah. reached at least a few of the students. And also huh. in the early clinic exposure, as per MCA booklet only, we have. Uh, at uh, the end of the one hour session of 15 minutes, they write for half an hour. So in both yeah, the yeah. sessions, what, what we're doing is yeah. we're making them write and we're writing the papers and storing it. One is in the EC logbook, one is there. And uh, yeah. for basic science correlation, we collect the paper, we say distribute papers, collect it and file it. So we had six huh. sessions of basic science correlation and six uh, sets of uh, reflective writings from students. So it is filed. So that uh, we don't yeah. know if them say ask for logbook, we can keep it. So that's how we are carrying it on. And I think reflective yeah. writing is really good. As you said, uh, what, what next? The students are able to yeah. uh, try to try to corner the points like exactly. Otherwise, it's like yeah. a vague study. As you yeah, it's a vague thing. So if you use these three questions, it works out very well. And if you give yes, them yes. what, you know, you give, uh, put them, put what, so uh, what, what questions you write down and give it to them, they will still be better off and they know what is to be written. What happens? Yes, so what questions? You know, if you just mm -hmm. give them those questions and say what? I mean, they yeah. are just young, 17, 18 year old children. So they have not yeah, any yes. theory of yes, reflection. So if yes, you give them these basically, you know, these basic steps, you know, these baby steps, then uh, questions and give them these frame these questions, you give them the vocabulary. It works out very well and then they start writing. Once they are into practice, no, they fluently write down this and I've seen it. I mean, really yes, there is yes, a job. And it's just and a page to write. They don't have to write pages and pages. Just yes, reflect on it and tell them what is short, what is description has to be short, interpretation is the mace, most important. What, what, so what is very important and what next is then a little bit again. So if you just yes, tell them this is enough, yeah. Thank yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor Sridhari. Hello. Hello. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening. It was, it was a wonderful presentation. 
Thank it was you. a wonderful presentation, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, actually, reflect your ID. We should start from huh. the foundation course and then continue with the SDL and uh, EC. Everything you have to take the reflections, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Foundation course, you have to take a reflective writing. Me, you don't ask what no, we did is one week session we took. Uh, one week, first week, we asked them to write, reflect on it. Not every session. We just asked them to reflect on the full, full one week sessions. It becomes too much okay. for us to read so much. Uh, so one week session we took and we asked uh, them to. So four weeks it was. So four, uh, four uh, reflections we had for, of each student. But you should and teach the SDL them. also, we were allotted. A... Yeah, SDL also we had to take. But we did not take for all SDL. We asked them, uh, two or three SDLs, we asked them to reflect. And ECE also, we asked them to reflect. But in the logbook, we asked okay. them to write only um, two or three. I mean, what, however, uh, ten, we could not finish 10 ECs because of the pandemic. So whatever four or five ECs that we had finished, we had asked them to write down in the reflections. That what is, about and, uh, integrated teaching we do for them, ma'am? Yeah, uh, integrated teaching, whatever we do for them. For that also, we are supposed to take the reflection or uh, not, ma'am? No, no. We did not take any reflection. But if you want, you can ask them to okay. just write down reflections if they want integrated teaching. But there is no oh, okay. need to reflect on that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Meghna Padwal. Hello, Meghna. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi, Meghna. Hello. Hello. Hello, madam. It was excellent. Hello. Hello. You can hear me. Hello. I can hear you. Yeah. It was excellent presentation, madam. And the uh, difference between reflection and narrative was very well uh, taught. Uh, actually, uh, related to Dr. Bhattar sir's query, um, the idea of writing reflection immediately uh, it is if time is there, may, uh, maybe in ECE time is there. But what was our experience uh, this year? That uh, the first reflection, it was a visit to our hospital laboratory that was written very uh, beautifully by the students. Maybe it was the first reflection they were writing. Literally, they noted the NABL accreditation number also in their reflection of laboratory and many things that were not taught, like blue bag, uh, yellow bag, red bag, black, many things they wrote. But then for second reflection, third reflection, when we used to ask them to submit the logbooks after a week or two days, then there was too much copy pasting of the uh, topic. So sometimes I feel that um, they should write then and there only. I don't know. Like, no, but when we talk about reflection, no, that description part should be very small. They should interpret what yes. description is there. That is very important. Yes. So what, why? No, so that would be very important. You know, what next? So what? That is important. So yes, uh, the only problem I felt is when we give them time now, our uh, 50 hmm. sincere students will write it correctly by their own, and the remaining 50, uh, 100 will just copy paste from their friend's notebook. Hmm. So um, then when we correct the logbook now, it is just repetition, repetition, and then you understand that it is just copy pasted from some good logbook. So maybe hmm. we need to give them more experiences so that um, um, the copy pasting is less. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more hands. Okay. So we can. Yes. We can stop here okay. then. So. Yes, I have a small comment. I mean, when we were doing our. Uh, MH, me and Dr. Sujeta, we were doing under Kiel University. There is a, the first session is uh, self review. It's okay. a very long yes. uh, uh, Almost for two months, we are taught how to do self review. It's something similar to this, but slightly on a bigger scale. And there are different types and types of it. Yeah. And you start getting lost in different types of. Uh, 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 reflective writing and the review of the multiple studies. That, uh, but uh, in the end, you have to come down to 
think that uh, you can't master everything. People who are master one thing, uh, maybe you might have blinded it. Yeah, I would say that even you know when we ask them uh, this ECE or any uh, any question where we are asking them why do you think something has happened, it is a form of reflection. Yeah, you know, it's so a form of reflection. Even when we are going in a bus or when you are you know driving back home or wherever we are alone, there are times when uh, when you think back, na, you you think back and I, uh, you think back about if you've been angry with someone. Or uh, if you've said something nasty to someone, not not unknowingly, you go back and you think and you say, "Oh God, did you, did I do the right thing? Should I apologize?" You know. So that feeling of should I apologize or should I say that look, I really was in a bad mood because my son was not well oh, wow. or something like that. And then you'd go back and you tell this, you know, you reflect on that, uh, and then you take action. By going in a positive and clarifying. So these are small things, you know, which in day to day life also we reflect. And that is what we have to bring back, uh, bring out to the students and tell them that it is nothing uh, rocket science that we are talking about. It's something that you we need to do every day. Yes. Doctor Subhanti. Please unmute yourself. Sugam P K. Hello. Uh, Hello. Good evening, yes. madam. Good evening. The question was very much. Uh, like whether to have uh, immediately the uh, reflected writing or afterwards. And uh, uh, thank you for your excellent preparation, ma'am. Actually, I have thank made you. the question, but it was thank already you. answered. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. 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 Yes. Thank you. So good night, everyone. Good and night. Uh, the, the good next night. time, please come prepare. The CB uh, one group one will be presenting their uh, SLOs, the ECE, and uh, example of uh, uh, SDL. All right. So we will all meet on Monday. Yes. Thank you, madam. Thank you.